Developing SharePoint Applications with Iron Speed Designer. Here is an example of an application developed for SharePoint in Iron Speed Designer. On the right hand side, you see an application developed with Iron Speed Designer, and on the left hand side, the same application has been deployed on the SharePoint server. On, in this application, all of the functionality of a standard .NET web application developed with Iron Speed Designer works as is. You can look at Ajax uh, pop-up windows, for example. You can go ahead and filter by a particular category. You can uh, reset those filters as you need to. Uh, you can also create and bring up new categories by bringing up the Add page with all of the rich text editor functionality that's available to you. Cancel. Look at all of the menus, for example, and bring up the Show Orders page, and so on. All working in the environment just like a standard .NET web application. And included with this is all of the security that comes along with uh, the SharePoint application. Let's talk about the basics of a SharePoint application. As we saw, all of the features that work in a standard Iron Speed Designer application work in SharePoint. All of the page types, the multi-level menus, the exporting and importing, the Ajax pop-ups, update panels, auto type ahead, formulas, the inline and sort procedures, security, and the same exact code model that you have gotten used to with Iron Speed Designer. Everything that a standard web application is supported in Iron Speed Designer is also supported in a SharePoint application. Let's talk about a few additional things uh, about SharePoint applications. First of all, one of the biggest benefits of using a SharePoint application is to leverage on the security that is provided in the SharePoint environment. Authentication, which is to verify the identity of the user, is provided as part of the SharePoint environment, and this can be leveraged by utilizing the existing SharePoint users uh, when you set up security. You could alternatively also use the database role-based security that is provided as a standard feature in Iron Speed Designer applications. In addition to this, you can also specify authorization, which is to specify access control for either a page or a specific control on a page. You can use either database role-based security, as you're used to in a standard .NET application in Iron Speed Designer, or you can leverage the SharePoint groups as roles. And in these cases, in the case of the roles, you can actually specify it that very specific to a web application site collection in a group, or it could be common to all web applications by essentially just specifying the site collection and the group. Now let's talk about a few about the requirements uh, for the application itself. When you create this application, you would be creating it for the SharePoint 2007 or the Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. It uses the standard SharePoint theme uh, that is available as part of that, but during the development environment, you would use something called the SharePoint in Inherited Page Style. The application must be developed with .NET 3.5, and it could be either using Visual Basic .NET or C Sharp. In terms of the database, you can use any of the three databases that are available as part of the Iron Speed Designer application. You could use Microsoft SQL Server, you could use Oracle, or MySQL and any of the versions that are supported by Iron Speed Designer. Microsoft applications do work, however, they are not recommended. And the reason for that is that you have to make some modifications to the SharePoint server in order to enable file operations and OLEDB. And then also, Microsoft Access does not work on 64-bit servers because the Jet OLEDB driver is not available on 64-bit systems, and you have to change SharePoint to run under 32-bit mode. Probably not the recommended way, and that's the reason why we recommend against using Microsoft Access uh, for your SharePoint applications. Let's talk about what is needed on your development machine. Much like the SharePoint designer that Microsoft uh, recommends you use for SharePoint applications, the development machine does not require a SharePoint server. And in fact, it should not be a SharePoint server. During the development phase, the application developed in Iron Speed Designer uses a simulated SharePoint environment. The only requirement on the development machine is that you must have a SharePoint DLL available in the global assembly cache, and it can be copied from any SharePoint server. That's the only requirement that you should have SharePoint on that. 
In fact, if you do have SharePoint Server or Windows SharePoint Services installed, you will run into deployment problems and in fact it'll, it is not recommended to have uh, Iron Speed Designer installed on the SharePoint Server at the same time. When you're looking at the application, we prefer that you use the .NET Development Server. It's built into Iron Speed Designer and that is the default setting anyway. IIS may be used, however, it does not always correctly simulate the SharePoint Server and that's why we do not recommend it. In terms of security, you can configure SharePoint security when you're using Iron Speed Designer in the simulated environment, but you cannot obviously enable it because you're not within the SharePoint environment. In terms of the deployment server, the deployment server obviously can be a SharePoint 2007 server or Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 that's available freely uh, from Microsoft. There is no need for you to have Iron Speed Designer on this uh, de uh, deployment server. And deployment must be done through the Windows SharePoint Solution Package, WSP, which can be created through the deployment wizard in Iron Speed Designer. Let's see how we can create an application for SharePoint in Iron Speed Designer. Start Iron Speed Designer and click the big Build an Application Now button. This will bring up the application wizard. Press the Next button to see the different page styles available. When you are creating an application for SharePoint, you must select the SharePoint inherited theme. If you select a different theme, the application, uh, the choice for selecting the web application for SharePoint will not be available in a subsequent step. Select the inherited theme. Then you come to the database step. In the database step, specify a server and specify any authentication information that you need in order to connect to that particular server. Press the Next button. You will see a list of page types displayed automatically on the left-hand side. Nine pages are selected. You can then select a, a specific set of tables from any of the databases that are available on your, uh, in your database. In this case, I will select a, a few tables. Press the Next button. And this will give me a choice of pri uh, uh, suggested virtual primary keys and virtual foreign keys. In this case, there are no suggestions here. I'll go ahead and press the Next button. You'll be given a set of uh, language choices. I'll go ahead and press the next button and see if I can specify an application name. Keep in mind, this is where you would essentially select the web application for SharePoint. If you selected a different theme, this choice will be grayed out. Also, if you selected .NET 2.0, the web application for SharePoint is also grayed out because you cannot develop a .NET 2.0 application for deployment on a SharePoint 2007 server. So make sure you select .NET 3.5 and in the earlier case, selected the SharePoint inherited theme in order for you to make sure, in order for you to be able to select web application for SharePoint. You can select either C Sharp or Visual Basic .NET and you can have either stored procedures or inline in terms of SQL statement generation. This is where you can press the next button and press the finish in order to create your application. Adding security to your SharePoint application is very easy. Bring up the application security visit from the tools menu and select Microsoft SharePoint as the authentication type and Microsoft SharePoint groups as the user authorization. Press the next button and you will see that you have a couple of ways of retrieving all of the SharePoint groups. First way is through web services where you would specify a URL. A second way is to actually use the SharePoint database. We recommend using web services and this is where you specify the URL. Once you specify the URL, press the next button and it'll retrieve all of the groups that are available in the SharePoint server. You can either do it for all web applications or custom for a specific web application. Regardless, select one of the groups and then go ahead and select some of the pages and press the set button in order to apply that. That's how easy it is to specify group security on SharePoint. Finally, deploying your SharePoint application is a breeze. We have an advanced deployment wizard under the deploy menu that allows you to select the SharePoint solution package. Keep in mind that this option may be grayed out if you are not using Enterprise Edition or if you have not developed a SharePoint application on the application wizard step. Press the next button. Allows you to specify a directory where the new deployment installer will be stored. You can specify any additional assembly information. Press the next button and it'll go ahead and create 
uh, the deployment installer. Once that's created, you can take this deployment installer to the SharePoint server and install it. We've got a detailed step-by-step -step instructions available in the part six, deploying applications into production in the online help. Bring that up and click on the SharePoint solution package deployment and you'll see a step-by-step -step instructions on how to go about deploying your application to the SharePoint server.